While out on bond for a rape charge, Tulsa police say this man assaulted two young girls. And just two weeks ago, investigators say they connected him to another sexual assault from 2003. Now, these latest charges are all thanks to testing rape kits that sat untested for years. It's an issue I first looked into back in 2016. Now, seven years later, I'm seeing the progress in bringing victims justice. It's my Fox 23 investigation. Alfred Wilson sits in the Tulsa County Jail facing charges in three different sexual assault cases involving four victims in Tulsa over the course of the last 20 years. The victims were very vulnerable at the time that they were attacked. Lieutenant Darren Ehrenrich leads the Tulsa Police Department Special Victims Unit. He says Wilson already served time in Germany and Virginia for other sexual assaults. It just seems that with the facts and circumstances of this case, there's always that potential that there could be additional victims. The latest charges come as TPD continues to test rape kits from years ago that were never tested when the crimes first happened, oftentimes because the victim did not want to move forward forward in the courts or the suspect had already been identified. It's an issue across the state and the country I first told you about in this 2016 report. Tulsa police gave Fox 23 access to their crime lab so we could see what a kit looks like. Swabs are used to collect DNA evidence from the victim's body. Clothes are tested for DNA too. The evidence ultimately entered into the FBI database to identify the suspect. During that story, TPD was just starting the process of applying for federal grants to test previously untested rape kits for DNA. Since then, they received back-to-back -back grants totaling around $4 million. TPD Crime Lab started with more than 3,000 untested kits and have now tested around 1,300. Each month, the Tulsa Police Department sends 75 untested rape kits to a lab in Oklahoma City. It can take six months to get that information back. Of the 106 hits so far, more than half of those victims declined to move forward, and three of the suspects are already serving a life sentence. Among those being prosecuted, Christopher Korn. He was charged in May with a 1999 rape, though the victim is deceased. In June, police connected Jerry LeBlanc to a 2003 rape of a disabled woman, but discovered he died four months before that connection was made. Rafael Roman was convicted last year in a 2016 lewd molestation case. He's in prison after accepting a 25-year plea deal. And Isaiah Barron is serving time for the 2020 attempted rape of an 83-year-old. Police say evidence from that case linked him to a 2007 rape. We found several repeat multiple offenders from going back and doing this work. That's no surprise to rape survivor and victim advocate Danielle Tudor. We have learned that there really is no such thing as a one-time rapist. She contacted me when she moved to Oklahoma in 2016 after seeing my initial report, and we've stayed in touch ever since. As a teenager on the West Coast, she survived being raped by the man dubbed the Oregon Jogger Rapist. November 11th this year will be 45 years since I was attacked and raped in my childhood home. She says when you're raped, you feel like you don't belong anymore. You know, you're, you're now different. Her pain is now her purpose. In 2017, as an Oklahoman, she joined forces with then-Governor Mary Fallon to create our state's very first sexual assault forensic evidence task force to see how many untested sexual assault kits law enforcement agencies across our state had. Danielle continues to serve on the task force under Governor Kevin Stitt to ensure those kits get tested. When you have survivors who will step forward and they'll report and they'll have that rape kit done, they're protecting the community. That's why she applauds Tulsa police for continuing their work. They've really taken the time and the care to get this right. And as a survivor, I... I Deeply appreciate that. Lieutenant Aaron Rich serves on the governor's task force with Danielle Tudor. Would you call the um, testing these untested kits, has this become a passion project? Working on these cases, I think, is the most important work I've done on the department. And while the old casework continues, the Special Victims Unit investigates an average of 100 newly reported sex crimes a month. Anything from indecent exposure and peeping to revenge porn, molestation, and rape. Last year, they handled 1,150 cases, 
and through October of this year were just shy of 1,000. What's different now, in every case where a sexual assault kit is submitted with DNA collected, it's being tested. I think that's a huge lesson. We're tying them to other cases. We're tying them to other patterns of offenses. Every one of these Alfred Wilsons that we arrest leads to greater public safety um, and less fear for the Tulsa population. Shay, with all this work being done, it has been a long time for some of these cases, decades. Is there a statute of limitations problem here? Well, there is a statute of limitations, but the amount you, of time you have to report the crime, it has changed over the years. You do have more time. It does also vary depending on whether the victim is a child or an adult. Danielle, who has already changed some laws, is working to eliminate the statute of limitations when it comes to rape. She and the lieutenant say the most important thing for a victim to do is to report the crime right away and get that exam done, then decide if they want to move forward. But getting that evidence, as you just saw in that report, is key to possibly preventing another rape in the future. Great work, Shay. Thank you.